When I talked with Reinhard Gente, he told me the fascinating story about how he actually discovered the big black hole in the center of our Milky Way. And how did you end up making this discovery that there was a that our galaxy well, you see, uh, it was about 40 years ago when the so-called quasars were discovered. Quasars are objects which are sort of the brightest things around. Okay. okay? Yeah. And when they were discovered, pretty after about 10 years of intense discussion among scientists, became clear they're very distant. Therefore, they're very, very bright, very lots of luminosity. But all very small, so that the amount of energy which was produced, which is thousands to hundred thousand times the energy of an entire Milky Way, all mm -hmm. came from within, you know, a light year or a light month or something like this. And then when people were thinking about it, after a while, the speculation at the time uh, came about that this might occur when material falls into a big, massive black hole. Mm -hmm. Turns out that black holes are black, as I, right. as we all think, but. Once you, once you let material flow in and at a large rate, they can be the brightest uh, objects around. Right. And so that was the model which occurred. But to prove that model, you have to take an object which is much, much, much closer than a, a quasar right. and then go really in detail, make very precise measurements to see whether you can see the gravity and make really sure that there's nothing else but a black hole. So we tried that. It takes a bit of time. Yeah. Now let me tell you that in the, to get this, now, now we sit in front of this and we're all delighted that we have this. Mm. When we started, you know, uh, most everyone would have thought, you know, we were ridiculous to try this even. Because, uh, first of all, to make these, to, me to measure a motion here, you know, it requires exquisite measurement. Mm -hmm. That, when we started, was just barely becoming possible and we, had a, we met a lot of skepticism that we would, we would get it and so after quite a bit of uh, convincing and, and yeah. so forth, they let us actually do the experiment uh, on one of the telescopes down in Chile. Then the next step was, after a few years, we, we actually saw the motions and uh, looked very promising. Mm -hmm. looked very promising. The there was this very strong indication that there was a central mass there. It was very concentrated. We weren't really sure it was a black hole. So we had to do yet more. And so that meant we had to build uh, experiments, yet more uh, difficult uh, instrumentation to measure more precisely, to use this adaptive optics, which then allows us to get yet more sharp uh, images, yet better, better measurements. Now, in fact, then when in about seven years ago, uh, we saw one of the stars, so to speak, take the turn, oh, <laughs> right? Okay. That was just like Christmas. I mean, you, know, <laughs> you know, we were taking these measurements and for all, you know, about five years, we saw that star slowly moving and all of a sudden, you know, it was on the other side. And, and that, that we knew was sort of a critical thing because that means it came very, very close to the center. And that, that allows you to measure the swing, if you like, of gravity very close to the central object. And that was sort of the critical part of the measurement. Now that star is once around and wow. we've been refining our measurements ever more. And as we go on, we can do ever better things. And so this is sort of a triumph of uh, experiments in, in making things ever better. It shows you have to have also a little bit pa of patience, you know. Right. 17 years is a significant fraction of one's right. active lifetime. Right.